How long are we still going to point this painting for? <laughs> until, until it comes to life. <laughs> I'm Kumar. I do research on labour issues for a non-profit organisation okay. and I'm also a board member at a migrant labour NGO. My name is Margaret. I'm an inclusion ambassador from Disabled People Association. And uh, Disabled People Association is across disability. I'm Liana and I am an entrepreneur and author of the book title Homeless, The Untold Story of a Mother's Struggle in Crazy Rich Singapore where I tell the story of my lived experiences when I was once homeless here in this country. Wow, oh, you know, looks striking. Eh? Oh no. yeah, this is just the very colors, striking. It's very standing, upstanding. Eh? It strikes up. It does, it does. Mm. Oh, we have so many hands. It does, right? There's huh? many hands involved. Many hands, there. you see? This painting in itself, uh, overall, it gives such a huge, you know, apart from just bringing back memories for me, it gives me many feelings. There's anger, there's sadness, there's a lot of injustice going on around here. This is before even knowing, like, you know, what, what the painting is about. It really evoked a lot of emotion for me. Look at that crowbar. Why is there a need to use that? In a way, uh, there are two different colour schemes, right? One is the darker tones. The hands with the darker tones are kind of trying to take something away. Uh, in contrast, you have the colours that are brighter, a bit more red, closer to blood, the human body, flesh, and they are trying to protect the child and, and actually the animal there as well, right? Yeah. What looks mm. like a dove. Yes. So it seems to me to see like there are two types of hands, right? There are helping hands and there are helping are, hands and there are, are the distorting hands. Right. <laughs> exploiting hands. Yeah, exploiting right? hands, that's right. Yeah. You know something? You know when I look at the, the hands, it's actually trying to t remind me of somebody mm -hmm. who actually trying to um, survive in the world. You know, like we all disabled people who, who are trying to um, to be like what they are. I wonder who who wrote did this, this painting? Uh, yes. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. This is uh, from Amrus uh, Natalzia. It's an oh. uh, Indonesian, Indonesian painter oh. from oh. the. They were from the Indonesian Communist Party. Wow. Actually. Okay, okay. And they believe this uh, philosophy of stepping down, mm -hmm. which means like you know you have to go down to live with the, with the uh, with the farmers with the workers. Correct. Mm -hmm. So this this painting I think was about the landowners and I how they, they they take away the land of farmers and workers and so on. Wow. So actually, uh, you, if, if you are taking away from them the, the land, the mistake is the only survival or dependent on. They have no other source of living. Yeah. So of course, I think they are so, they try to protect them from getting grabbed from them. That's right. That's uh, right. Two things, right? Yeah. One is one is uh, people who, the landowners, Correct. who that's want right. to Protect. Become richer yes, right. mm. to, to, be, to accumulate their wealth. Mm -hmm. yes. On the other hand, you have people who are the farmers who are just trying to live here. Just trying to live, survive, and yeah. just get to Living for three life. meals a day. Well, because they depend on the mm. land to, put, to, to survive. True. Yeah, and then, because uh, the richer is always getting the richer, the poorer will get poorer. Word, Margaret. <laughs> yeah. It brings me back to the memories that I had when I was once homeless. And you know, looking at this painting, it kind of like the, the first feeling that I got, it angers me. Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> it, it almost brings me back to that night when the park got a raid and there are a lot of, you know, government officials going around shaking the tents and asking people to uh, get out of the tent and leave. It's, it's as what is depicted in this artwork actually. Yeah. Wow, it really brings back memories. How do we defend against violence? These, these things need to be thought of and I think what is necessary are more hands and more more of these hands trying to counter the grabbing hands. So maybe more hands means supporters. So if you have more hands and supporters, then the the landlord will not be like kind of a, easily abuse them. If the landlord should be nice enough, maybe give them another alternative. It's true. I think um, an alternative approach, of course, will be um, much more. Um, 
welcome here, right? Yeah. But just wish there, like what Kumar have mentioned, more hands. And more hands not to you know oppress these people, but more hands to protect. I mean, it's, it's countering greedy hands with solidarity hands, right? That's right. More solidarity, that's what we need. He's holding a candle in the broad daylight. I wonder why. Look at that guy. He looks so cunning and manipulative. And and and, and I the way that that person is dressed, uh, tuxedo, yes, uh, suit, blazer, and then uh, and then and then you know very nice evening dress. Yes, mm. it suggests maybe maybe the, the the painter is trying to say that there's a certain immorality of that kind of excess, mm. that kind of richness mm -hmm. in the yeah. face of somebody who can't even have a proper singlet. Yep. Yeah. In a way, that's what the painting is trying to do at that time, I'm sure, to try to shine a light at this widespread inequality to show that, look, there are people who are living in excess, living such extravagant lifestyles. Mm -hmm. But in the meanwhile, there are people who are living less than bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it's, it's, it's also reminding us to yeah. continue to do that work. Many people will turn a blind eye on, on you know, all of these yes. things and in this painting, in that particular, that man who is there apparently trying to seek help in his way or maybe looking for something, trying to, to share his plight, trying to get some aid in his way. But all, of, all the other people around are just um, ignoring. Yeah. If you don't have something, that, uh, uh, a candle that's holding, you think people will look at him when yeah. you are different? Because he's actually really different in the sense that he's barefooted and his singlet is torn. So actually, the the paint, the paint, uh, the person who paints this is trying to deplete the to show to the the viewers like us that is uh, the poor and the rich. The poverty is there. It's said that it is happening up to this day, huh? Some very important person in Singapore said that uh, there is no such thing as homelessness. In Singapore, there's no such thing as poverty in Singapore, and um, in a way, it's, it's it's people who are poor, people who are homeless are like it's like that man uh, without the with with that torn singlet, it's coming out wearing putting a candle in broad daylight, trying to say what about me, right? And today also we don't have a poverty line, mm -hmm. so we don't recognize poverty properly. If we can't say that this is where poverty is, it's very hard to address it. Hey guys, I I think okay. This this is that Ken Jeong making a cameo in the strike. He's this actor, you know, he's an American actor. He's oh, an American okay. Asian actor. Okay. This this guy really looks like him. Eh. I'm serious. I'm <gasps> oh yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The pictures have all those people gathered together. I think they're having a tea break, is it? Or after the hard day work, mm. it looks like they're sitting down and talking about what the day of the job. The gentleman looks like they are from the oppressed side and the, the nature of their discussion in this um, artwork is pretty serious, right Kumar? Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, the title of it is On Strike, right? And it's about the Hockley bus riots in 1950s. Ah. The, I think they were striking for better conditions, working conditions and I mean, it doesn't come across to me as a lunch break because it's so organised mm. and the person on the right who is standing there you know with a white armband there appears to be like a leader maybe mm. trying to to organize a discussion facilitate it moderate it a bit better or taking a break during the strike as well or maybe we're discussing what to do yeah. but where are the women in this picture uh, no woman that's why i was wondering why why yeah. the woman is not involved i was wondering and that's the interesting thing right when you brought up the food brings people together and how i wish and it's actually funny when i look at this picture that um in this current setting, today's age and during this um, year, right, mm -hmm. where I can foresee that we can do this, but instead of people around, it's like laptops and <laughs> yeah, mobile around. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> so how I wish this uh, phenomenon can still carry out up to this day. I don't think it. so. And we could have like this kind of conversation over what? Right. Platform like Zoom. Zoom, yeah. <laughs> and, right. then and then have then like meetings. Probably you will not see so many sitting around. You'll be all in individuals' homes and with the computer with the Zoom talking. And the then, new norm. Yeah. And then the internet start lagging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because everyone is using it. <laughs> I think what, what the word that comes to me is empowerment. Hmm. Um, because knowing that they are workers, I see that 
Com compared to how I think some workers are portrayed in paintings as uh, marginalized and weak mm. and, and exploited, what I see here is they're doing something about it, right? They're okay. trying yeah. to improve. La. I wish that you know the, the disabled people at home will be out of the house. So every time when you ask them to go up, uh, ask these disabled people or the aged people to go out, they always will reject because they really have created that self pitiness inside them. So it's, it's, it's good that uh, how to get it break that, that self pitiness is that uh, we try to get volunteers. We need a lot of volunteers to go to their home and to talk to them and then like, bring them out. I heard that this Hockley bus ride is a success, right? The, the workers get to raise their wages. Yeah. So how can we apply a success that you know this kind of strike had before to today's day and age? A lot of the way I do my kind of uh, advocacy is what I would call organising. And organising means trying to talk to people who don't currently agree with you. Mm -hmm. You go to a social gathering and you just talk to people who are like, who agree with you, right? But I'm more interested in talking to the person who doesn't agree with me. Yeah, so that's, I think, how I see social change. For me, it's because I'm thinking of disability point of view. As an inclusion ambassador, whether they are welcomed by the company people, kind of thing, see. For my side, homelessness, poverty, um, and even, you know, like access to the rental flats here in Singapore, we will still need to continue to come together, have more supporters, to effect the social change effectively. If you look at the, the, the painting here, mm -hmm. there is a tent, mm -hmm. right? My idea of social change is expanding the size of the tent, mm -hmm. not just focusing on the tent alone and trying to get more people to come to the tent. Mm -hmm. That's important, but I think like uh, where there's a gap is trying to expand that tent. I think the walkthrough we did the three different paintings. I quite liked the narrative of everything. The way it was lined up, in a way we were searching for justice, right? We were searching for equality, we were searching for compassion. After the whole walkthrough of the gallery, looking at the paintings, um, one thing for sure is that it's not boring. <laughs> I managed to have some fun. Uh, my takeaway is that there are other various um, medium that we can use to um, send out a message and one way is by how the artists have tried to to share his messagings across by his paintings. I think art imitates reality. It um, is a way of expressing the truth. Um, I think it also allows us to say things that we cannot say in real life sometimes. Some opinions that are a bit too controversial to say. Maybe some opinions that people are not ready to listen to yet. So I think art has that function, what they had, that, the effect that it had on, on me at least. When, when I was a student, I remember we used to come to the museums, mm -hmm. but it was not very structured. We would just go in there, and we would just look at it and we'd be like, okay, like exactly what you said, we went there a few seconds and we were off. But I think like today, like what we did was, uh, was, was so good in, in people who have seen art before, people who have not seen art before, and people who have seen a bit of art, like we all take away something, mm -hmm. right? For me, it's a, it's a, it's a from my first experience that I could able to enjoy so much, uh, know so much the in depth of the, the picture that we all do share. So actually, well, imagine if I would come alone, I think I would spend there, I stand there for a few seconds and I would walk off already. So because of this walk, walk through, so I'll be able to get a clear picture of what is actually could have happened during the era, mm -hmm. which the artist is trying to deplete it to us. Mm -hmm. So I think my takeaway will be that I will try to bring my teenager, my younger ones, to experience it for themselves and to expose themselves to more medium of arts and to see if they can, uh, and also to take that chance to see if they can share with me their perspective on what they see. Yeah, you'd be surprised the, the way their children are thinking are different from we are thinking. Yes. Mm, I think teachers have a very important role to play, mm -hmm. like where art is concerned. I think the kind of skills that these artists had to express that uh, would not have been possible if they did not have uh, the right teachers. Mm. For example, the way the 1997 painting on Hockley bus riots, something that happened in the 50s, the recreation of the memory is interesting because when I was in school, what I saw of the Hockley bus riots were buses on fire. Mm. Right? And to me, as a kid, 
looking at that, it's like, this is a bad thing. Uh, this should not happen. But when I look at that painting, I see organizing. I see people who are serious about what their work is. And I see a lot of people who see that there's a lot of value in this. And I, I see something that is a form of empowerment, right? And a different uh, dimension to the idea of what we learned about the Hockley bus strike. Um, after today's walkthrough, right, actually I felt much more compelled and or oh, I think the word here will be inspired to bring more future generations, not only my kids alone, but to encourage uh, the other youths to come and visit the gallery. Apart from feeling inspired, I feel much more compelled to keep on doing what I do, to continue doing what I do and advocate um, more strongly, I would say, yeah, in, in my ways. And the art itself, it's, it's interesting to see that the art can, can you know, uh, inspire me to have that kind of motivation and drive. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Margaret? For me, I, I'm thinking it's because um, in the society in Singapore, the mindset, we need to change the mindset of the people of thinking so that they can able to like because it takes some time for the people to appreciate art, like like for in case like me, you know, where I I don't actually appreciate art. So until this walk through, so that I gradually, you know, are able to appreciate all the 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 hard work the artists have put in through and mm -hmm. trying to interpret the the kind of feeling that he's trying to tell us. So I hopefully that the society, you know. We are able to change the society thinking that to appreciate the art the artist is trying to put on.